Hello and welcome to this week's Out of Cast, your program completely in English about cinema, movies, movie studios, directors, everything that you need to know uh, to improve your knowledge about cinema. I'm Helga the Bluehead with my friend, friend and colleague, Twinkle Norayos, truly. And um, as we promised last week, we will continue to talk about uh, Tim Burton, the genius Tim Burton, that uh, the great who... majestic Tim Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> Does Tim Burton ever train? I don't know that. Probably not. Who his uh, imagination is uh, infinite, like like li- literally. Now, um, this week we will start off with a uh, big fish coming out in two thousand and three. Um, well, Big Fish is based on the novel by Daniel Wallace, stars uh, Ewan McGregor as Young Ed Bloom, Albert Finney as Senior Ed Bloom, Billy Crudup as Will Bloom, Jessica Langle as Senior Sandra Bloom, and Alison Lohan as uh, Young Sandra B- Bloom. And last but not least, Hella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to talk today, so I will say in the last but not least, Helena Bonan Carter as Danny and the Witch as well, also and also Marion Cotillard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the story tell the, the movie tells the yes. story yeah. of Will Bloom, <laughs> which is a journalist living in Paris who has been for most of his life frustrated by his father Edward, who is a man who tells the same stories over and over and over <laughs> again. And all of Edward's absurd stories, the one where Will is the most, it's the one about the day he was born, which involves a giant catfish eating Edward's wedding ring. And uh, when and Edward tells the story at Will's wedding, Will loses it and cuts all the contest with his father for the next three years, until one day Will receives a call and learns that his father is suffering for terminal cancer and he doesn't have much time longer to live and from now on Will decides to know the complicated man before it's too late. And the movie uses um, a harsh uh, use of several flashbacks and it's divided into two paths that intertwine with each other as uh, there's the one about Edward's past and the one about Will's attempt to determine the fact from fiction while his father doesn't have much time left. Now it's a bizarre yet uh, sweet uh, and spectacular movie and a spectacular story to tell. It might not be everyone's jam but it um, it just grabs your attention and holds on to it that you can just can't let go. The movie also doesn't come clear whether the stories are totally made up or whether they're true. Um, but this is not a plot hole actually. It's uh, left for the audience to um, think about it and decide whether it's true or not. Big Fish was totally not a financial success as from its high budget of 70 million it only got back around 123 which did not even repay the cost of the movie itself however the rotten tomato score seems to glorify big fish after all Uh, but there is a big gap between the tomato meter which is 75 percent and the audience score which is 89 percent (laughs) si ma sempre giuro non è che aspetto qualche contatto ok Ok, sento. Now, what you just heard was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory teaser trailer, which came out in 2003, and Eleanor's I didn't expect it. I thought that because we were told by the music. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't sound that much creepy. Hmm. They didn't repeat uh, Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory enough for me. <laughs> now, Eleonora, just want, uh, want to inform us more about this movie. Sure. Well, it's another time to Batten Squad with John Depp made another successful and unforgettable project. Charlie and, of course, with 
chocolate factory. But this time we have something different from their usual cooperation and for the first time we have an happy and colorful world to confront. The Xena child as the main role is always a big risk for the world every project yeah. ever made by it's a human kind risk, really because child actors are are spooky <laughs> <laughs> but with sufficient knowledge and feelings of Tim Burton about the children's world and the presence of Johnny Depp to cover one of the protagonists helped to make it much more beautiful also Freddie Highmore has done a great job portraying his role as Charlie Baggett our child protagonist now maybe you don't know that there is actually an old version of it uh, that came out in 1971 and um, in fact Tim Burton's version is actually a remake now the original version is called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and um, it both uh, the movie is really good the old one uh, the portrayal of Willy Wonka by Gene Wilder is highly praised and uh, both movies also are based from a book in 19 that came out in 1964 a British novel of the same name by Roald Dahl uh, now Helena Bonham Carter also co-stars in this movie and there are lots of hilarious and amusing dwarf like creatures or humans <laughs> human <laughs> beings too as one of the pop uh, most popular characters of all time, Johnny Depp stars as Willy Wonka with a completely different and fascinating handsomeness style to it. Like, if you want to compare the two uh, Willy Wonkas, you can see uh, the one from the meme, uh, it's the old one. <laughs> yes, exactly. The one meme that you see is the old one. Uh, now, uh, he is bizarre yet quite charming uh, and also a bit of fun fact here these actors also were considered to play Willy Wonka which is Billy Mary <laughs> Bill Mary Nicholas Cage Jim Carrey Michael Keaton Brad Pitt Will Smith and Adam Sandler can you imagine Adam Sandler Adam Sandler <laughs> best actor <laughs> the humankind has ever seen you <laughs> Adam Sandler now got a solid 82% on Rotten Tomatoes uh, from critics point of view which is tomato meter uh, but on the opposite side and what is quite questionable for me is that the audience score is 51 that's really odd um, but it grossed over uh, 475 million at a uh, worldwide box office on the budget of 150 million <laughs> That's a cup of poison coffee, Danny Capadawi. Uh, I hope no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? What do you want to talk about? Corpse Bride. <laughs> mm. And we're not on air. That's why we're so bizarre right now. <laughs> I love the cup bride. I used to watch it like 30 times a day when I was 10 years old and that's well, why... seriously, I, I mean I love I, it but I haven't watched it this much. The movies that I always watched when I was a child were Cops Bride, Chicken Run <laughs> and the 90s uh, Disney movies like Hercules and Little Stitch which was like more 2000s but uh, that's what I mean. Oh. Hercules, Hercules and... Uh, uh, Hunchback of the Notre Dame, have you watched? Uh, I only watched it when I was 16 years old. Oh, that's really sad, I know. But, no, uh, it's okay I, because I, 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 I've also watched it recently and it just haunts me. I love it so much. Le Campania Notre Dame. I don't know how it works. Yeah. You watched the Italian version. Na, 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 na. Brucia come sangue dentro me. The Italian version. Yeah. I, I only know Hellfire because that's a title. It's the most beautiful one. I mean, I love it so much. I rewatched the video of that part over and over again in YouTube. Oh, that's really sweet. Come, good. Good girl. She's pretty. <laughs> I, I I was trying to remember what was the original title of uh, Le, uh, no, Le Folie dell'Imperatore. Uh, 
the new Empire's Groove. Empire, Empire's yeah. Groove. Empire's Groove. Now coming up in 2005, Corpse Bride, which is a favorite of mine. Which I think is the favorite for everyone. I mean, it's lovely. It's a really lovely one. Absolutely. Now tell me. <laughs> okay, so I can say that the Corpse Bride, also known as Tim Burton's Corpse Bride, is a 2005 British American stop motion animation musical. The comedy directed by Mike Johnson and Tim Burton, with a screenplay by John August, Caroline Thompson and Pamela Petler, based on the characters created by Burton and Carl Strangle. So I think it is actually not Tim Burton's Cops Bride, it's more like all these people's Cops it's Bride a, yeah. in the end. I mean, if you want to look at it that way, each movie is done by many people, of course. <laughs> You're right. And so, the story is set in a small European village in the 19th century, where Victor Van Root, who is voiced by Johnny Depp, of course, of course, <laughs> like as a list, I probably as a list of actors I am allowed to use. Johnny this Depp is, is my only list one. of uh, the actors I want to cooperate with. Johnny Depp, no one else. <laughs> exactly, and for f f female roles, uh, just Helena, Helena Bonham, Bonham Carter. Carter, or at, um, in um, later years, Eva Green. You're right. So I was in our all right that uh, Victor Van Lute finds himself in a rented marriage with Victoria Everglow, who, he, who is voiced by Emily Watson, a girl who um, he has actually never spoken to. And the day before the marriage, Victor performs disastrously the woods, and later that night, while he was walking through the woods, hopelessly practicing his woods, he put Victoria's ring on that to what Lord to like a branch, but it was actually a corpse. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> oh dear god. And uh, this corpse uh, is Emily, who is voiced by the Ram of Ram Carter. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> <laughs> and well, his new dead bride takes him to a, to a dark and mysterious never world where they are now married. Now, Victor is really frightened at the moment and realizes that he has fallen, li fallen in love with his true fiancée, Victoria. So he searches for a way back to his own world. Uh, the story is such sweetness and delightful to it, and although being told in a very weird and uh, maybe a bit creepy way that you cannot simply not fall in love with this amazing stop motion. Now we gotta say and you gotta admit it's sort of a pure art in nowadays stop motion animation. And here you are some curiosities. Um, did you know that uh, this movie, the story, is based on a Jewish folk tale called The Finger? Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Now you know. <laughs> the more you know. The more you know. And also, you may not probably know that for the 30 main characters in Corpse Bride uh, story, there's a total of 300 puppets. That much? Yeah. What? The most expensive of which um, commanded a 30,000 price tag. It cost the money. <laughs> now, the group included 14 individual Emily models and a dozen. Victors. Its Rotten Tomato rate is 84 and gained more than 117 million worldwide. It's also worth noting that the movie was nominated for Best Animated Future at the Academy Awards. The musica. <laughs> the boom of the room. Boom the room. No, 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 no. Ah. Uh, ah. L'importante è che vedi lei! <laughs> C'è... Sì, Bene. sì, clip di Sweeney Todd. Coming out in 2007, as you've heard the trailer, Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. 
my favorite. I know she has told me before, and <laughs> it's really cute. I love I love to see people filled with passion. It really drives me alive. This is my most favorite Tim Burton movie. Like I really love it so much. I rewatched it many times.、Uh, I've lost count. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. So I am hundred to start it for you.、Then. Thanks. So let's start it in、uh, this way. It's a British American musical period slasher film and an adaptation of Stephen Sondheim and Hugh Wheeler's Tanya Ward Winnie nineteen seventy nine musical of the same name. The plot is about a nineteenth century barber and turf serial killer Sweeney Todd, who would cut、uh, cut his customer's throat while the set in his barber's chair. Before sending their bloody corpses down a specifically made chute and into the cellar, where they were chopped up by his accomplice in crime, the baker Mrs. Lovelet, and used as the filling for her meat pies. Now, quite disturbing, isn't it? I love it.、Uh, but it's so awesome. Now, hear this. While author Peter Haney claimed in his 1993 book Sweeney Todd the real story of the demon barber Fleet Street that Todd actually existed and was responsible for around 160 murders in 18th century London, it's more commonly accepted that he was in fact a fictional creation. Also, an interesting fact here: Sweeney Todd's notoriety, not,、uh, notoriety, was almost rivaling that. Uh, of another 19th cent-、uh, century London serial killer, Jack the Ripper. That will be interesting, you know, like、uh, <laughs> Jack the Ripper versus, versus Sweeney Todd, Todd, produced by the <laughs> Asylum Productions. It, it could be awesome. I with, mean, uh, with, uh, with the killer sharks in there. It could be really amazing, and it could have a better Rotten Tomatoes number than Batman vs Superman. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> She did it! She did it! <laughs> And for now, some words from Tim Burton himself about Sweeney Todd. Of all musicals, Sweeney Todd is my favorite. The opportunity to create a film that is a combination of horror movie and musical was very exciting. It provided me with the chance to tap. Into the Hammer horror films, as well as the older Universal films with actors like Boris Karloff, the、uh, Peter Lorre, and、uh, Lon Chaney. I believe Sweeney Todd is in the same league as characters presented in those films. And now there are there have been many adaptations of his story from stage production to huge plays, movies, both for the big screen and small screen. But this one truly stands out. The way the story and secrets are unveiled, the acting, cinematography, editing, art direction, production design, and costume design, and dear God, the music! Oh my God, the music! It all gives you a full pack that you don't want to miss. And on the other hand, it's so brilliant you can't. Handling. Now some facts, some fun facts here for you. Johnny Depp, as Sweeney Todd,、uh, actually wasn't quite sure whether he can sing for the main main role or not. But director Tim Burton and producer Richard D. Zanuck、uh, were so sure that they casted him anyway without even hearing him sing. <laughs> they even they didn't even know that he can sing, but they casted him anyway. And also, Helena Bonham Carter trained、uh, for three months every day, so she could be prepared for her role. The movie, in general, was a success. The film was chosen by National Board of Review as one of the top ten films of 2007, and won number of awards, including Golden Globes for Best Motion Picture, for、uh, Best Musical or Comedy, and Best Actor, Musical or Comedy, and as well as Academy Award. For best art direction, also Bonham Carter was herself nominated for Golden Globe Award for best actress in a motion picture, musical, or comedy, and Depp received a nomination for the Academy Award for best actor. Also got a Rotten Tomatoes score of 85 percent and grossed more than 125 million worldwide. Abbiamo parlato un sacco. Welcome back to How to Cast. This is your co-host Twinkle Nora with my dear beloved blue friend. Hell yeah, the boo head. I 
Yeah, like, yeah. Do, do not be confused with the Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please don't. I, you know, I really do hate Smurfs. Yeah, I feel it. I really don't like them. I tried my best to like them, to enjoy the cartoon, the movie. I just really couldn't. So you probably didn't see the Sony movies. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, both. There are two, right? I think so. Yeah, there are two. I I've seen both and I just can't. I don't know. But the two <laughs> movies were terrible. Like, very well, like references to Guitar Hero and it feels so old. <laughs> Hero. Ah! Okay, now we're here to talk about Alice in Wonderland coming up in 2010. It's an American drag fantasy adventure film from a screenplay written by Linda Wolverton. The cast is pretty amazing and we have stars like Johnny Depp, Anne Hathaway, Helena Boham Carter, Crispin Glover, Matt Lucas and Mia Vaviviscovras. <laughs> <laughs> Mia was a ghost girl. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. In the role of Alice. Perfect. It's the cut. <laughs> okay, so, inspired by, of course, Lewis Carroll's fantasy novels, Alice Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, and Walt Disney animated film from 1951, Tim Burton has revealed 145 years later what happens when all the tea things are soiled. <laughs> Facing an imminent arranged marriage to a son to the English lord, the 19 year old Alice Kingslate spots an unusually familiar rabbit scampering through the palatial estate's flagrant gardens. Could the well groomed bunny be the same creature from her strange and insistent childhood dreams? The answer lies at the butt. <laughs> Like, we'll discover it in the next episode. Continue! <laughs> Don't forget to tune in! Exactly! The answer lies at the bottom of a deep and dark burrow, the mystical entrance to the world of the Underland, where peculiar beings congregate around a never ending tea party. And she's <laughs> the only one who can restore the White King to a throne and all that stuff with the help of Matt Hatter, played by Johnny Depp. I'm way too slow, please go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, she also has to slay the Jabberwock, a dragon-like creature that is controlled by the Red Queen, who terrorizes Underland's inhabitants. Also, let's point out that the Red Queen loves to be behead almost everyone who literally says anything that she might not like, shouting, OFF HIS HEAD! head! Okay, I, I think, think we, we just uh, broke destroyed your ears. The ears of it. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry for the health of your ear that we just shouted, but I just wanted to shout at this so much. <laughs> Off with his head. <laughs> now, the movie also um, presented, presented the classic characters such as the Ch Cheshire Cat, a Caterpillar, and the funny Twiddle Dumb and Twiddle D. <laughs> The film was produced by Walt Disney Pictures and shot in the United Kingdom and United States. And it gained more than 1.25 um, billion at the box office. Can I have some of it? Oh, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> we gotta be hired at Walt Disney Studios. When uh, Walt Disney, when would you hire us? Please, I can make some damn good coffee. Yeah, and I can voice over. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> the soundtrack is done by Danny Elfman, and there's all, uh, also an al album called Almost Alice, uh, realized uh, songs by important singers like Avril Lavigne, uh, Robert Smith, The Cure, and Franz Ferdinand. Also, uh, the Rotten Tomato rate is only 51, which is really quite bad. Uh, but we know you loved it. Because there's many awesome stuff about it. The costume and production design, hair and makeup, and of course, art direction. And the 83rd uh, Academy Award, it won Best Art Direction, Best Costume Design, and was also nominated for Best Visual Effects. The only negative thing about this movie Can is... I say it? Can yeah, I say it? You, you go for it. It's the dance of a Mad Hatter of Yen of Amel, which is just too weird. Too weird. Just, it's just too weird. Quite unbelievable. I, I really don't get it. 
All right, let's get to 2012 with Dark Shadows. The very colorful Alice in Wonderland, Tim Burton directed a gray and gothic comedy, Dark Shadows. Barbans Collins, played by John Depp. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Isn't that a bit obvious? <laughs> it's a 1760s man cursed by a witch. Everyone he loves will die and is forced to live forever as a vampire. And after being buried by the people of his own town, he wakes up 200 years later only to discover that the witch who cursed him is still around as well. And although the movie is not an idea of Butter himself, it's thanks to Johnny Depp he directed it actually. Wow. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dark Shadow is based on a 1966 gothic American TV series by the same name, and Jeff was so obsessed with it, called it a dream to play Barbara's Collins. So, he brought Burton aboard. Uh, and the movie then came to be. Uh, the movie marks the 200th uh, on-screen appearance of the late Christopher Lee, as well as the last one of the original series actor Jonathan Freed, who played Barnum's Collins and unfortunately died shortly before the movie came out. Now, even if the movie also stars Eva Green, Helena Bonham Carter and Michelle Pfeiffer, it didn't really do well neither at the box office neither at with the critics the visual style and cre um, uh, and the humor uh, was praised but uh, the pace and plot felt inconsistent as well as lacking focus on a certain genre as horror comedy or drama we can also point out the quite interesting dar dark humor of the movie and some very wise lines from the screenplay on rotten tomatoes it has got 36 percent which is really bad and grossed more than 245 million at the box office <laughs> Corriamo, corriamo, sì. Okay. You, anyway, end up here, okay? Okay. I'm gonna go here. Quindi qua stacco. Mm. It's, okay. No. Anyways, you're done here. Okay. Actually. All right, Frank and Weenie, also coming up in 2012. It's based on the 1984 Tim Burton's live action short by the same name, 2012. Uh, Frank and Winnie returns this time for new material as a stop-motion black and white comedy. The story gets inspiration from various old movies such as The Bride of Frankenstein and other universal horror classics, and of course, the original Frankenstein story by the novel of Mary Shelley. The story takes place in a typical but new world, very much alike of the one in The Cop's Bride, where young Victor Frankenstein, who is voiced by Charlie Tahan, is heartbroken when his dog Sparky runs into the street and gets run over a car. Now the kid, um, fast, very fastly, returns to, uh, to cemetery and re uh, tries to reanimate Sparky, his dog, using a lightning bolt. He succeeds in it, but of course he um, he's forced to hide the new resurrected Sparky from literally everyone. Uh, but eventually the word will get out, even if Frank and Winnie surely can't be described as a Burton masterpiece. Uh, it holds on Rotten Tomatoes with a notable 87% on Rotten Tomatoes and the movie was a moderate success at the box office thanks to uh, gaining 81 uh, million and uh, with a 39 million budget. Now, the movie for sure is an innocent movie for all ages. There's such sweetness to it and of course some very beautiful life lessons that it'll kind of make it hard for you to forget. It was also nominated for both Golden Globe and Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. Now we have a parlato un minuto e quarant. Siamo velocissimi, nessuno può fermarci. All right, and we're up to 2014 with Big Eyes. It's one of the must-watch movies, not just because of its beautiful directing and great performance, both by Christoph Waltz and Amy Adams, but also because of its spectacular story. Surprising cast, though. Have you... Uh, I, Did you just hear yourself? Uh, all right, I yeah. can't read today, I'm sorry <laughs> for that. So, the film is about the life of American artist Margaret Kane, uh, famous for drawing portraits and painting with big eyes. It follows the story of Margaret and her husband, uh, Walter Kane, who took, credit, who took credit for Margaret's phenomenally successful and popular paintings in the 1950s and 1960s. 
It follows below suits and trial between Margaret and Walter after Margaret reveals she is with true artist behind all the paintings. And Margaret Keane, who is played by wonderfully by Adam, Amy Adams, you go. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. who has done a great job portraying the living artist, Ben, you go. Uh, also, Crystal Waltz, accompanying Amy Adams, has also added his unique style of acting to this movie. Now, this film is a journey inside the world uh, and mind of an artist, a painter who, despite skepticism and many obstacles, creates some of the world's most beloved and stunning works of art. Other positive points of this movie is also the original score and the beautiful, astonishing hunting music by Lana Del Rey, which is Big Eyes. It has got 72% on Rotten Tomatoes and it did, unfortunately, very poorly at the box office, earning only 29 million. Uh, the movie was praised in general, with Amy Adams winning the Golden Globe for Best Actress for Motion Picture in Comedy or Musical. Also, she was nominated for a BAFTA for Best Actress in Leading Role. Waltz uh, was also nominated for Golden Globe for his performance, and Lana Del Rey received a Golden Globe nomination for the film's theme song, Big Eyes. Now, coming up in 2016, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Jake Portman, played by as of A.X. Butterfield, is trying to overcome the death of his grandfather, receives a book of his containing a letter from Wales addressed to his dead grandfather and signed by Miss Alma Peregrine. Once there, Jake finds out there's a hidden home for peculiar children run by Miss Peregrine, uh, played by Eva Green, kept inside a time loop which makes everybody in the house live the same day over and over and avoiding aging as long as they stay in. The filming began in February 2015 in Florida, in Tampa Bay area. And a fun fact, this is the second that Barton's movie being shot in Tampa Bay. The first one was Edward Scissorhand in 1989. And the movie didn't actually very well at box office and critics as well, as it grossed only $296 million against a budget of $100 10 million on pair with the previous movies, uh, movie Dark Shadows, which earned uh, 2019 297. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 19 years old and I don't no. remember the numbers. <laughs> so, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 60, no, 65 yeah. percent. The website Critical Consensus reads. Miss Peregrine's Homes for Peculiar Children proves a suitable match for Tim Barton's distinctive style, even its own with stronger fortune on a visual experience rather than a narrative one. Now, there's also worth pointing out that the original music for this movie, Wish That You Were Here, by the English indie rock band Florence and the Machine, is really beautiful and we highly recommend it to you. This is Out of Cast, this is your, of course, co-host Drinkle Nora and Helia the Bluehead and we're at the finishing point we are gonna talk about very briefly about Dumbo and then we are done talking about Tim Burton you can say that we are done <laughs> no of course not <laughs> <laughs> so, Dumbo, Dumbo, no, it's Dumbo. Dumbo? Because in Italian, in we Italian, say Dumbo. Yeah, it's Dumbo. When I uh, went to the theater, I heard that in Italian, it, it said Dumbo. And I was like, why? It's what? like the Hulk and Hulk. <laughs> it's terrible because we don't know English. <laughs> So, Dumbo is an American fantasy adventure film with a screenplay written by Herman Kruger. The film is inspired by Walt Disney's 1984 animated film of the same name based on the novel by Helen Amberson. I'm sorry to put it down here, 1941. Ah, okay. yeah, 1941. Go on, go on. <laughs> so, the film stars uh, Colin Farrell, Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, <laughs> Eva Green, and uh, Alan Arkin, and follows a family that works uh, at a filling traveling circus as they encounter a baby elephant with extremely large ears who is capable of flying. And the magical world of Tim Burton is officially finally back. With the help of his movie, and surprisingly, no sign of Johnny Depp can be found around. <laughs> yeah, there has been a couple of movies that there is no sign of Johnny Depp. 
is this, is, could it be the end of Johnny Depp? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, Will Smith was first chosen for the role of Holt Farrier, which is portrayed by Colin Farrell, but he passed on the role since he was busy working on Bad Boys sequels, Bad Boys for Life, and then was busy bringing the gene for live action Aladdin to life. Uh, after that, Billy Harder, Chris Pine, and Casey Affleck were also offered for the role, but passed on it before Colin Farrell was cast. Now, the story is such a sweetness to it that it has but it's surprising that it has got 47 percent on rotten tomatoes i don't know why but many critics say that it suffers from lack of heart but i really don't get it because my favorite critic said that she teared up i teared up my relative that i went with she cried her eyes out so i really don't get it also the cgi work on uh, dumbo is really astonishing so i'd say that this movie is really worth watching don't pay attention to negative reviews this movie is beautiful it's so full of heart and also the music, uh, original music in the movie, Baby Mine, it just touches on your soul. It's so beautiful. We couldn't recommend it more. We're, uh, we're in, we can't, I can't talk more. We have to go. Our time has run out and I'm so sorry that I have to just go. Also, don't forget to follow us uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, also on uh, app TuneIn. You can listen to us. Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday. I've been Helia, uh, the Boo Head with... This is Trinkle Nora and... This we'll... was out of cast. Can I say it? Yeah. And we'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> I really didn't know what was I saying. <laughs> okay, cross <laughs> it. <laughs> Della cosa bellissima su questa fila! Dai, dai, andate a vedere! Dai, dai, noi dovremmo fare, vente, un programma nostro, parliamo quanto ci pare, facciamo 5 ore di podcast! Esatto! La gente, la gente dopo 10 minuti non ci ascolta più! Ma no, un'ora non basterebbe! Eh, perché un'ora tra la musica e altro! Eh, eh, eh. eh sarà 30 minuti di sì, parlare! Sì, manco! Eh, lo so! Nie! Nie! Ah, registrava bene, ciao gente! <laughs> do, you want, do you want to say something for the world? No! Good! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs>